Hi, viewers, good evening, one and all. Today, uh, sorry for the delay of for 15 minutes due to technical reasons. Today, topic is diverticulum in the kidney. Uh, diverticulum in the kidney is tricky job. RIRS and PCNL are two treatments of choice. In RIRS, finding the mouth of the uh, finding the mouth of the uh, diverticulum is uh, difficult. Whereas in PCNL, uh, parking the guide wire is difficult. So to discuss about that, we have Dr. Sumit Kumar today, and uh, he will share his experience. I will uh, introduce him, and then uh, we will hand over the program to him. So, video-based surgical presentation on PCNL in diverticular calicial diverticulum. Dr. Sumit Kumar is assistant director and the consultant urologist at Surya Super Specialty Hospital, Shai Biganj, Garkhand. Travel fellow, UC Khan, Olympus 2016 Bows. Third prize in video presentation at annual conference of Eurolithiasis section of USI. Eight publications in national and international journals. Several presentations at various national and state forum. Area of interest, endourology, laparoscopic surgery and andrology. Uh, Dr. Sumit, thank you for accepting the invitation. Over to you. Uh, thank you, sir. I am sharing my screen. Yeah. Uh, sorry for the delay. No problem. Uh. So, uh, sir, thank you so much for the uh, opportunity to present uh, my experience on uh, PCNL in calicial diverticulum. Hello? Yes. Uh, tap once, it will move. Tap uh, once, it will move. Yes. Yeah. So, calicial diverticulum, it's a congenital defect. Um, it's a cystic cavity which is lined with non-secretory transitional cell epithelium. It is thought to be formed due to small urethral buds that fail to degenerate. It communicates with the main collecting system via a narrow neck and there's passive retrograde filling of urine. Its incidence is approximately 0.2 to 0.6%. This is based on IVU performed on adults. Prevalence is similar in adults and children. It's more common in women and the average diverticular size is 1.72 centimeters. It's commonly located in the upper pole and mid pole, and the chances of a calicial diverticular stone is 9.5 to 50 percent. Wolfson's classification is based on site of communication with the pelvic calicial system. Type 1 communicates with the minor calyx, it's located at the poles, and symptoms are rare. Type 2 it's commonly located, it commonly communicates with the renal pelvis or the major calyx. It's commonly locally located at the mid zone and it's commonly symptomatic. Dateless classification it is based on anatomic description and the recommended treatment. Type 1, wide mouth and short neck. SWL can be performed. Type 2, closed mouth and short neck. RARS can be done. Type 3, closed mouth and long neck. PCNL is recommended and type 4 with obliterated neck, again PCNL is recommended. Usually, these patients are asymptomatic, but pain, hematuria and a current UTI can occur. Sepsis, abscess formation and hypertension are rare symptoms. Differential diagnosis, it includes renal parapelvic cysts, hydrocalicosis, cystic tumors, solitary abscess, tubercular cavity, and papillary necrosis. On imaging, in plain radiograph, it appears as a meniscus shape density on an upright radiograph, and it changes its shape with changing position. On IVU, it appears as opacified cystic cavities that communicates with the renal collecting system on the excretory phase. On ultrasound, it appears as cysts unless filled with the stones that shows gravitational change of echogenic contents. On CT urography, in early phase, it appears as a small, round, low attenuation areas adjacent to the calyces. On delayed phase, it appears as filling of this area with minimal overlying cortex. On RGP, location of neck of diverticulum can be done. Treatment is based on the symptoms that the patients have, and the criteria for choosing de treatment depends on anatomic description, stone burden. The treatment modalities include ESWL, RIRS, PCNL, and laparoscopic surgery. 
ESWL, this is a list invasive technique and the criteria of selection include functionally patent diverticular neck, mid to upper pole diverticular, small stone burden and patients who are unfit for invasive treatment. The results, the stone free rate is low but symptom free rate is good. The limiting factor being poor drainage. RIRS, this is less invasive as compared to PCNL and the selection criteria include small stone burden that is less than 2 cm, anteriorly located upper or interpolar diverticula. It has lower complication rates as compared to PCNL and stone free rates are more than that of ESWL. The limiting factor here is difficulty in identifying the ostium and there is lower rate of obliteration of the diverticulum. Blue spritz technique is helpful in the identification of the diverticular ostium while doing RIRS. Coming to PCNL, it offers definitive management of diverticulum that is by fulguration, incision or dilatation of the diverticular neck. Large stone burden can be managed and it has high stone free rates. Advantages, it is suited for posteriorly located mid to lower diverticular stones. Upper pole calicial diverticular stones can also be managed in experienced hands by renal displacement or triangulation techniques. Anterior calicial diverticular stones can also be managed by supine PCNL or an indirect puncture through a posteriorly located calyx. The steps include first uh, ureteral catheterization and RGP, followed by uh, puncture of the diverticulum and placement of the amplified sheath. Thereafter, lithotripsy can be performed and stone is removed. Thereafter, diverticulum can be fulgurated, followed by uh, dilatation of the diverticular neck and then uh, in, uh, placement of nephrostomy tube across the diverticulum. There are uh, difficulties in performing PCNL in calicial diverticulum. Uh, most importantly, it can be while placement of the uh, uh, yeah, uh, needle, IPN in initial puncture needle and parking the guide wire in the calicial diverticulum when it is impact when, when there is an impacted stone or the cavity is does not show any space. Like in this diagram, the in the CT scan we can find the there's there was no space. So a stone guided bullseye puncture is made and we can find the guide wire going out of the calicial diverticulum. The track dilation was performed under fluoroscopic guidance and then the lost channel can be retrieved under vision. We can see the guide wire to be going out of the system. After injecting methylene blue from below, we can adjust the position of the amplified sheet under vision and fluoroscopy and reach the stone. Thereafter, the stone fragmentation can be done once the stone is localized. The next hiccup is uh, identifying the diverticular ostium. When there's difficulty in identifying the ostium, we can inject or instill methylene blue or betadine from the ureter catheter. Like here, betadine was injected through the ureter catheter and the ostium was identified. Then third step is uh, placement of the guide wire across the uh, diverticular neck and control dilatation of the diverticular neck. I thank Dr. Nitesh from Patna who has uh, helped me with this video. Once we reach across, then, the, then if the diverticulum is capacious, we can place a digestant across into the diverticulum. We can also fulgurate the diverticular cavity. I have taken this video from the YouTube which was uploaded by Dr. Igor, which shows the technique of fulguration with roller ball.
Then comes the laparoscopic surgery. Selection criteria include anteriorly located uh, calcial diverticulum. They can be treated by, by transperitoneal approach. Posteriorly located diverticulum can be treated by retroperitoneal approach. There should be an identifiable ostia. There should be large stone burden, and there is should be thin overlying parenchyma. In these conditions, we can use laparoscopic technique, but it's most invasive technique and health complication rates are also more. To summarize, um, when the stone burden is small and it's located in the upper pole or mid pole, we can use RARS as a technique of choice. But when the stone burden is more than 1.5 centimeter and it can be located anywhere, we can go for PCNL. Laparoscopic surgery is also a option for anterior posterior located diverticulum when the parenchyma is thin and there's large stone burden. So the take home messages include, the RS is preferred for treatment of anterior located upper to mid pole calcium diverticulum, small sized calculus. PCNL can achieve successful stone clearance in almost all cases. And PCNL is a bailout procedure for all difficult calcium diverticulum calculi. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Sir, you, uh, your voice is not audible, sir. You need to unmute. Can we close the screen? Yeah, yeah. Sir. So, uh, if, uh, do you have any preference if the diverticular stone is in the upper pole, you will prefer RARS first? Forget about ESWL. Uh, let us discuss about uh, flexible retroscopy and uh, PCNL. So if you do um, flexible retroscopy in upper calyx and uh, PCNL in lower calyx, will there be any advantage or it depends on case or you have to go always go inside see the PCS? Sir, um, for upper pole diverticular stone, RRS is always the first choice, sir. RIRS is a choice. Very large stone, you prefer PCNL or RIRS? Because sir, for large stones, I prefer PCNL, sir. PCNL. So if uh, uh, the guide wire doesn't go into the uh, pelvis and if the methylene blue is not coming, you will just fulgurate and come back? Hello? 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 Hi, yes, sir. Uh, if the diverticulum is not communicating with methylene blue or any opening or guide wire, will you fulgurate and come back? Yes, sir. And in that situation, will you keep the PCN? Sir, uh, not necessary, sir. Not necessary. Uh, because, sir, because, sir, there is no, we can't go across the diverticulum. It's a, and it's a diverticulum is considered to be non secretory, sir. So, there's, I don't think. Uh, Putting a piston tube will help any anyway, and a piston tube may come out also into the very nephric space. Okay, so what is the main difference in the exam? They will ask for the juniors because this topic uh, seniors uh, may not be interested. For the exam going on juniors, they will be interested. What is the difference between renal cyst and diverticulum? If you, do, if you can enlighten, it will be nice. Sir, renal cyst can be on based on the Bosnian classification that way and uh, uh diverticulum all there's always a communication with the uh, uh pcs yeah, there should there, uh, there is communication we cannot diagnose diverticulum properly that is correct yes, so um uh, do you think that asymptomatic diverticular stones can be left behind is there any criteria that up to what size we can leave it if the patient doesn't have any symptoms Sir, if patients are asymptomatic, we can then we can leave that behind, sir. Yeah, lot and of we can always follow up them up, sir. A lot of patients will be asymptomatic because diabetic cholesterol management is a little morbid, unnecessarily getting into fuss. If you read RGP yes, carefully and if you are suspecting in the parenchyma uh, without any dilatation or not compromising the kidney function, sometimes uh, balanced uh, uh, withdrawal from the duration of surgery is better. Do you agree or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 100%, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. This is a small topic and every surgeon, the juniors, seniors, they have to uh, tell their own cases. You have taken your own case and presented. That's what exactly we want in pure urology and you have presented the same.
I appreciate that. Thank you, Sumit. Uh, see you in some time with some more case. Sir, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.